from Canada, Team ABBC. It's the fastest growing sport in the world, and I absolutely believe it. This should be a really fun event. We're really looking forward to it. Have a safe event and have fun, guys. I just love the game so much, and I love the people. I just want to have fun. It's not like a stereotypical sport. There's a lot of stigmatism around it. Like, that's really weird for you to be doing that. Go hard, 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 hard! Let her break the puck, let her break it. You need to protect her. Protect her and get her through, right? Okay, two minutes, two minutes. Originally, back in the 20s, it was a uh, halftime show for a football game or something. When roller derby first started, it was an entertainment vehicle. It, it would move from city to city with planned teams. It was all for entertainment. It was totally for entertainment. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Once again, from the Roseville Army in Newark, New Jersey. I remember watching it as a kid when derby was in its heyday in the 50s and 60s and 70s. It was a lot more staged and cheesy back then. We got a wild one here. Well, here comes Joe Weston. She has had enough, and she's going to defend her skaters. Anytime I say roller derby, somebody they go, uh, Skinny Minnie Miller and someone on a bank track getting hit with a chair and over the top of the bar, and it, it very much like wrestling, because some of the outcomes seem to be planned. And Kevin may well have put a dent in the Hammond Civic Center floor. It was all entertainment to get people in the building, and it was very entertaining. It was some of the biggest watched television in the 50s and 60s till it started to wane and kind of ran out in the 70s. It was resurrected 10 or 12 years ago in, in Texas and Arizona by these women that wanted to, to bring it back. They put it on a flat track, because building a bank track's really expensive, so they did it flat with some tape and literally made up the rules as they went along. When I started, it was for fun, and it wasn't for the sport. I started roller derby because I needed an outlet. I just Googled it one day after talking to a friend of mine and um, thought it would be really cool to do it. We were the only ones doing derby in this country. So in January, February, March 2005, we were it. When we took on our roller derby names, we thought we were someone else, but we were still us, just another part of us that suddenly we could make shine. The sport really made me feel alive. And being part of roller derby and the girls on the team, it was a sisterhood. We helped each other, we talked to each other, we partied together, and it was a new group of friends. We were serious, don't get me wrong, but it was fun back then. It was an interesting time to wear the fishnets and garters, and there was a lot of TNA, I guess. Put on a pair of skates, put me on the track, let me play, that's a different me. That's a character, and that's the character that I play in Derby. But my outside person, my, uh, my everyday person, that's not me. Sour Cherry and Sherry are very, very different people. When Flat Track resurrected uh, early 2000, I never looked back or went back to that entertainment vehicle that it was in the 50s and 60s. We wanted to be a sport, a true athletic sport. Uh, the fishnets and the makeup, that was really fun for me when I was like 13. So I would wear fishnets and a short skirt. I would wear like big fluffy leg warmers on my feet over top of my skates all the time. Now I'm kind of, I want to look more professional when I'm playing. So I opt for more black helmet, black leggings. I don't wear high socks in actual games anymore. Just my jersey and that's pretty much it. I like coaching. Find your stride, find your pace. The kids are fun. We've got two minutes. I love Shower Cherry. <laughs> yeah, she's, she's amazing. She really, she tries a lot and she cares about us. Just watch me the first few times and then I'm gonna get you to work on some other stuff. I absolutely love her. <laughs> she's basically like a second mom to me and like everyone else who plays for Edmonton. Plant your feet, plant your feet. Good. Off. She's someone that is very easy to talk to, very approachable, and she's a great teacher. Ready? Go. 
If you're going to join roller derby, you have to know in advance there's going to be a part of it where there's going to be hitting. At some point in time, every player needs to get hit, and they have to understand how big the hits can be. So I'm going to do it. In. I hate to be the one to do it, but there are kids my size. If it's me doing it, then I don't feel so bad because at least I can take care of them if they get injured, and I don't want them to get injured. There have been tears over the years, for sure, but if they're gonna cry, they're gonna sit at the end of the bench, and they're gonna wipe their tears away and man up, so to speak, and get back on the track. If they don't want to get back on the track, I'm not going to force them to. So ultimately, it's their choice. <laughs> You've got five skaters aside on the track. Uh, there are two skaters designated as jammers. So the only skaters that can score points, they wear a cover on their head that has a star on it, so they're easy to spot. The object is to get your jammer through that pack first, and the next time you come around to the pack, you now are eligible to score points. So your first time through the pack is just to get out of the pack. The next time around is to score points. You get a point for every player on the opposing team you pass on the hips. Diamond is, is three to four skaters uh, gripping arms to create a bit of a mass of humanity to keep an opposing jammer behind them. A flat wall is just what it sounds like. Four skaters across the track, taking up as much space as they can, hips aligned, the jam can last up to two minutes. They typically last 30 seconds to a minute because other things happen that make the jam in. The whistle's blowing, referees calling penalties. It's a little bit frantic chaos when you watch it, but when you have somebody kind of point out the, the rules of the road, it, you pick up on it pretty quick. Where do you need me? Uh, you are jump timing, right? If you want me to, yes. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, you jump okay. timing. Everyone volunteers their time. Referees, coaches, everyone volunteers their time. Five seconds! Parents, and, and even more so just the general public, you need to get out and see Junior Derby. The level of play has gone through the roof. Support your local Derby League. Hi there. Is this music real with me? Yeah, it is. Yeah, they're really good. During the week, I work 16 to 20 hours at the bakery, and then I throw in eight hours, five days a week on top of that, going to school. I'm doing a math, biochem, and meds 20, and then managing my time so I can be the captain of my home team, the Wild Rose All-Stars. She was actually eight years old. Uh, we went to a tattoo convention that a friend of mine was tattooing at, and uh, they had a roller derby demonstration going on and we sat down and watched it and she absolutely fell in love with roller derby at eight years old and then when she was 12 there was a just a new junior program and that was it it was she got into it and never looked back i chose ridiculous because my mom chose it for me so <laughs> we were just sitting in the car and she just it just kind of rolled off her tongue and i was like i really like that <laughs> it was for her red hair we were just driving along one day after registration, and I said, I think your name should be Ridiculous. And that's where it started from there. I tell her to go out there and enjoy it. Win or lose, it doesn't matter to me. I enjoy that the last five years, she's gone to a lot of places, met a lot of people, and has enjoyed it the whole way. Being in this sport has definitely strengthened me a lot. Like, I was very quiet, and it's just, it's helped me so much and gain so much more friends. I just want to go out there and skate. I just love the game so much, and I love the people. I love watching my daughter, how she's grown through Derby, as a player and as a young woman. Now that she's a captain, I can see where she really has some skills of leading some of these girls and help mentoring these girls. And when other parents come up to me and, and say how glad they are that my daughter's playing because she mentors their child or their daughter, and that just, I just love that. It's given the girls identity. Some of them that never fit in into typical society. This is where they all fit in. It's changed Kendra a lot, a lot. 
The self-esteem and confidence you see in these skaters that they're doing the stuff they're doing, it's amazing. It's really encouraging to see that. I see people go from can't skate to jumping the apex in a year and their minds are blown. And their confidence, their confidence exudes into other aspects of their lives. We work together and we have been for the past five, six years and we've just became stronger and grew as a team. We just have like that special bond between all of the girls on our team. We are like sisters, like growing up together and talking to each other about absolutely anything, being open to anything. And no one judges at all. We accept everybody for who we are. The most important thing that I've gotten from Derby was probably the safe place that I had to come out of the closet. Uh, I am a lesbian. I came out in roller derby before I came out to my family. I didn't know that my parents were going to be okay with it. I thought they weren't. They actually were, but I thought that they weren't going to be okay with it. So I knew that I had friends. I had people who did accept me if my family didn't. Her dad and I didn't really care. She's still my daughter. She's still fantastic. And she's, uh, you know, the fact that she likes girls is, you know, who cares? Now I have an extra daughter. There's a lot of names being an out high school kid. A lot of name calling, a lot of stares, a lot of whispering behind our backs, fingers pointing. Royal Derby definitely gave me the confidence to come out. This is my last year of Junior Royal Derby. I might not be playing Senior Royal Derby, I haven't decided yet. I'm kind of playing for the little girl that I used to be when I was 11 years old and I was too scared to talk to anybody. I want to be the person that I needed then. the first ever Junior Olympics in, well, worldwide, I guess. There's a lot at stake for a lot of kids at this point. It's trying to figure out where they belong and how competitive they want to be. It's her last tournament as a junior. She's aged out. So she'll, she'll skate with the women starting in the fall. So she just wants to go out with a bang. This is, this is it. This is what I've been waiting seven years for. This means war. <laughs> this skill level just has never been brought together before for Junior Derby, ever. The importance of this event is USARS, which is the governing body that uh, the Olympic Committee looks at and respects for roller sports, is using this as an opportunity to get roller derby in the Olympics, to take it to the Olympic Committee and say, we want to put roller derby on the list of possible sports. Junior Derby in the US is so much more established. It's definitely a hotbed. The competition's so high there. They practice almost like every single day. It would just mean a lot if Canada came out strong. Uh, this is my first time in Nebraska, and it's very warm. It's really hot. It's really, really warm. And there's lots of corn. Yeah, there's a lot of corn. I feel pretty strong about our team. It, we get along really, really well. There hasn't been any conflict, nothing like that. It's been rolling really, really smooth lately. The next few days is important to us because it's the pinnacle of our roller derby career. It's so important to us that we end it off as strong and as best as we can. I don't know a lot about a lot of other junior teams and junior players, so it's gonna be exciting for to me to see the talent that are and is in other places. I mean, to destroy them, that's always the plan. <laughs> front together, front together, front together! I don't think any of the kids expected to be this hard. The hits are real now, so things are a lot more intense. I look at opportunities within execution or things we learn jam by jam, not scoreboard. That's the last thing I look at when I'm in a tournament like this. A lot of them will go back and challenge themselves because they're seeing levels of play they've never experienced before, or strategy, or blocking techniques. It, it will light some of these skaters on fire. Everybody in! Three, two, one. A, B, B, C! We finished our first game a little while ago. We played against the Crossroads. The score was, I think, 48 to 175 or something like that. So we didn't win. It was a fun game though. I think everybody was really happy with the way that we played it.
when Junior Derby first started, it wasn't co-ed. It was, it was girls, juniors, that was it. Young men that want to play, they don't really have a league for them, so they put them in with these ladies. I just have a problem with it because there's a really big difference between a 17-year-old boy and a 17-year-old girl, just physical-wise. There are some teams that don't like being co-ed. Edmonton was one of them, because when I first started playing, they did not allow any boys to play. And then uh, I went to play a game with them, and they didn't realize I was a boy until after we played the game. Eventually after that, they kind of warmed up to the fact that like me and the couple guys that are on my team, you know, we're not that big, we're not that strong, and we just kind of want to play the game, so. If you play the game right, you can just dance around them a little. So it's not really a big deal. I believe everyone can just play fairly with each other. There's a lot of teams out there that cannot feel men's only or boys only teams. I'm just happy that the that there is a place for the boys and the girls to play derby. Together, together. All of the games are tough. You okay, Pippi? They did get beat around a little bit. Um, for example, with red. Forearm! Holy crap! She got hit pretty hard. Went down got up, shook it off, and then went into full-on beast mode and took out a few players in their path. I knew it was coming. She's quite well known for, for being a fairly hard-hitting player. That changed the tune of the rest of the, the game for a lot of the kids. So they can do that, and they have the ability to do that. And it was pretty awesome. There's a lot of you that turned into kind of savages, and that was kind of cool. <laughs> Good job. We are seated number seven, but we just finished playing. Uh, team that was seated one. Somebody said the last team got beat by uh, almost 300 points. I'm OK with being beat by, what was it? 120 points? I think we did all right. We held her on, and the kids did really great, and I'm very proud of them. So far, so good. Maybe things will change up. These USA teams are just more equipped than we are. But yeah. They're just better. What we've been doing has been extraordinary. We're definitely making the other teams work for their points, and that's all I want. It's an eye opener. It's, it's, it's a learning experience. There's some skaters here today from Canada that are uh, the big fish in a little pond in their market. They're the best blocker ever, and they've come here and realized they are not the best blocker ever, and that's that opportunity for them to take that back and work on that skill set. We have lost our first four games, and they have been some pretty big losses, but just getting to experience all the other teams in the U.S. and how good they are, and it's going to help me because I'll be able to learn from it. Teammates later on down the road. I love you guys. We love you, Cherry. Okay. Yeah. Fight hard. This is the game, right? Fight hard. 
Now we're rolling. We're rolling now, okay? We're rolling now. We just really want to show Canada that the West Side has the stronger derby players. We really want to prove to our country that we can represent us well and be able to win against East. If you guys are going to force somebody out, make sure you force them out. Take them to the line. Take them over the line. Not just to the line, over the line. The rivalry in Canada is not unlike any rivalry. When Vancouver plays Montreal or Toronto in Adult Derby, it's the same as it is when East and West. So when they get together, it's very electric. But they both want to win badly, and they want to show which one's the better team. Back block! Even though there is eight teams from North America, and we're competing for the seventh or eighth place, Seventh would be great. Actually, seventh would be amazing. Good job, good job. The kids did really, really great, and I'm very proud of them. They played against the best talent in the world. The U.S. juniors are the highest skilled skaters in the sport. So it's been an incredibly exciting weekend. That was my last game as a junior, and I don't, I don't know what I'm going to do now. I might play for an adult league, I might not. I feel like I can't not play. But it's going to be so different because it's not going to be these people. It's not going to be like, I think I've met one of, like, a lifelong friend. You know what, we put up a good fight. I know that I tried my hardest, and even though we lost, it feels like we won. I don't care what the scores were. We uh, did, you we played really hard. You all played really hard, and it showed. I just want to say thank you like that for everything. Yay! And we're the best damn losers ever!